You're listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Be amazed. Welcome to Jabberwocky Audio Theater. The following audio theater is rated ADG for general audiences. In the distant reaches of space, a lone ship plunges deep into the unknown. Her crew? Reg McCorum, ship's captain. Granier Kachowa, pilot. Shen Enling, ship's doctor. Tormar, engineer. Aiden Vosky, mechanic. Enling, Tormar, and Aiden have just escaped a wrecked ship before it careens into a minefield. With them is a mysterious robot. But can they be picked up before their enemies aboard the Silver Star get them first? Jabberwocky Audio Theater presents Rogue Tiger. Tonight's episode, Lost and Found, Part 1. Do not stop the suit thrusters. We must maximize the distance from the wreck. Easier said than done, Tormar. My thrusters are overheating. The thrusters should be able to sustain red line use for up to five minutes. They've been in the red for about that long. 651, since you're pointed back towards the wreck... In anticipation of your question, Doctor, we are still too close. How close is too close? If the wreck and the enemy craft hit the minefield as expected, we will be caught in one or more shockwaves from the ensuing explosions. Exactly. Engage your suit thrusters. I don't think I have a choice. Besides, I might need some extra juice in case our brilliant Plan A doesn't come to pass. Plan A? Nothing. We're on Plan F or G by my count. It is important to remain positive. Relatives from a robot. I don't suppose you'd like to calculate the odds of a tiger picking up our beacon in time. There are too many variables. Pilot Kojoa is very capable. How much time do we have left? Less than a minute. Engineer Tormar, I believe our current velocity should be sufficient to escape the most likely explosions. I concur. What happened to we're still too close? There is the possibility not all of us will survive the explosion. However, it is too late to increase our velocity to make an appreciable difference. I thought you said to remain positive. You have a better than 50% chance of surviving. In that case, I say we all rotate and take a look at the show. Very well. Hey, how did you turn around so easily? Try doing a tiny burst on your right mid-thruster only. Uh, No, not the rear run. It's this uh, one. On your side, uh, use this control here. Ah, uh, thanks. We must have had older suits in training. Wow. It looks like the Silver Star is decoupled from the wreck. Indeed. The enemy ship may yet survive. If it has time to change its trajectory. Let's hope it doesn't change its trajectory to come after us. Hey, did the star just launch something? 651, do you see anything? I do not believe so. What area of the ship did you see it? Ventral side, rear quarter. I do not detect anything. Maybe it was an escape pod. The Silver Star does not have them. I believe you were affected by a trick of the light, Doctor. Yeah, well, the star didn't have a particle cannon the last time you were aboard her either, Tormar. I saw something. I have had 18 of my eyes on the Silver Star the whole time, and I saw nothing. Come on, Tormar. They upgraded their weapons. Endling must have seen something. Maybe they have a small fighter? Do not be ridiculous. Simply because you wish to mate with the Doctor. Pardon. Everyone shield your eyes. The explosion is imminent. Jump complete, Captain. Good work, Grania. There goes our salvage opportunity. I only hope they weren't caught up in that. Let's check. Sounds strong and clear. Can you get a lock? I think so. They're moving awfully fast. Position the ship in front of the signal and open the cargo hold. We can let them slip in. You act as if that's an easy maneuver. The cargo hold opens up far enough below the main engines, but it's still rear-facing. Too much thruster and they're toasted. Too little and they'll be flattened inside the cargo hold. I thought you'd like the challenge. Yayana Akandila Kukan. Oh, I don't think your gods or the fates want to do us in just yet. We'll see. Captain, I read the three suit transponders, but the mass is too big for just the three of them. Perhaps they were able to get some salvage after all. You 
were correct. Your pilot is very capable. That's our ground, yeah. Well, okay, the ship's in front of us, but how... Oh, the cargo hold is opening. I see it! Aiden, Tormar, one of you two forgot to tie everything down in the hold. I hope that was not a valuable container. We will assess that later. First, we must turn around to decrease our velocity. Okay, so I need to flip 180 instead of spinning around. Good job. Thanks. Good. I suggest a five second burst to decelerate. That should be sufficient, but be careful. There is not much padding in the cargo hold. It's hard to look back without some extra eyes. Speaking of which, have you been keeping tabs on the Silver Star? I have, and I have not seen any escape pod, fighter, or other craft. Oh, you'd say that even if you had, wouldn't you? I only deceive you when we play cards, Doctor. You wish. Hey, I don't even see the Silver Star. Was it destroyed? Look below the main field of dust and debris, Aiden Vosky. Oh. If it's possible for a ship to look angry... It's coming about. What's the range of their particle cannon? Attend to the cargo hold, Mechanic Vosky. Easy does it. Tomar to bridge. We are inside. Hang on. Gravity gyros are gonna reset. I know, the gyros are going to reset. That's much better. Oh, Gravity, you don't know how much I missed you. Welcome back aboard. Sit tight for a jump, then come on up to the bridge. Understood, Captain. We did not have time to speak of it previously, but we have also brought a robot aboard. That's your salvage? I am not salvage. More like a guest, Captain. He's from the wreck. All right, bring it up as well. Bridge out. Is there something with the captain and robots? Yeah, well... You're gonna have to be on your best behavior, 651. That is my default programming, Doctor. That's our third jump on a random vector. We're well outside the system and no sign of pursuit. We can probably afford to let the drive cool down a bit, Captain. All right, but have the next jump point plotted. Based on what you've told me so far, Sylvia has plenty of reason to want to hunt us down. Well, she wouldn't be Captain Sylvia Malabar if she didn't want to hunt us down. But we didn't kill anyone. What about the crewman in the cargo hold? Okay, we may have contributed to the untimely ends of people trying to kill us. And when we decompressed the bridge? I still think all the bridge crew got their helmets on in time. All right. Sylvia doesn't split hairs like that. And we know her ship survived. I only hope it's damaged. Its appearance aids in that hope, but I cannot be positive. There is a 30% probability that the enemy vessel sustained damage to its jump drive, and a 70% probability that it sustained damage to its main thrusters. You're certain of that? I didn't catch your designation. Uh, Captain... I am Tacker Marathon 651, Royal Plenipotentiary and Privileged Servant of the Exalted Khalil al-Zamin. He lives for that. Lives being a relative term. So, Tack... Uh, I'm sorry, what was it again? Tacker Marathon 651. Right. So, 651, what are we going to do with you? If you set course 15 degrees spinward, 110 degrees vertical, you will find the reward you sought on the Sahaya, and I will have a chance to fulfill my mission. Did one of you tell it we were open for charters? Uh, no. He's kind of direct. But not forthcoming. Maybe he needs some maintenance, a little memory adjustment? You up on your robotics, Vosky? I wouldn't do that. He's, uh, pretty handy in a scrap. That is an accurate assessment. Captain McCorum, I am on official business for my house. While it is not in my interest to divulge royal secrets, it would be counterproductive if I were to put you or your crew in peril. All right, so we follow your course. What's to keep my ship from being tracked? Uh, Captain? What? The course heading he gave takes us through a nebula. A nebula? The Vistulan Nebula. It's a big one. Sensors bounce off. Scanners don't work. A whole fleet of ships could get lost in it. Or just one. You knew this. There was a high probability Granya Kochoa would check and see the nebula in the flight plan and inform you, Captain. Ooh, he's good. It can impress me later. You lot can go get cleaned up. 
Tormar, see that our guide here gets any fluids he may require? Of course, Captain. All right, Grania, I saw your looks. Give me the details. Well, first, his course into the nebula isn't a bad plan at all. We can shake Sylvia if she's following us. After we go in, she'd need a squadron to keep track of us, like wiping the slate clean. And as for why the Thing wants us to go in that direction? It does take us further out of the way than the course I plotted. It's obviously planning something, but the surprising thing is that the robot must have been planning it for a long time. What do you mean? It's ironic. If his model weren't so advanced, I wouldn't have heard the nuance in his voice. He called both of us by name, and neither of us volunteered them. I wondered about that. But the rest of the crew must have mentioned it. And our attempt to salvage the wreck of the Sahaya, too? Again, possible. Don't ask me why, but I have a deep feeling that our robot's clever plans date back to before we left Flat Rock. When we got the tip about the wreck... So, what clever plan does our robot have? And how do we fit in? You've been listening to Jabberwocky Audio Theater. Tonight's production, Rogue Tiger, Episode 16, Lost and Found, Part 1 of 5. Produced by Jabberwocky Audio Theater in association with Arlington Independent Media, WERALP 96.7 FM, Arlington, Virginia. Featured in the cast were Phil Amico as Tormar, Yasmin Twizon as Dr. Shen Enling, Nick DePinto as Aiden Bosky, William R. Coughlin as Tecker Marathon 651, Aaron Goldstein as Grania Kachoa, and Brooks Tegler as Captain Reg McCorum. Recorded at Big Ben Studios by Matt Bostaff. Music composed by John Maestri and arranged by Jason Chimola. Supplemental recording at Tohu Bohu Productions in Burke, Virginia. Dialogue editing by Maurice Malda. Sound effects editing, mastering, and final mixing by William R. Coughlin. Tonight's episode was written and directed by Bjorn Munson. This recording is the property of Team Jabberwocky, LLC, and may not be rebroadcast, retransmitted, or redistributed without express permission from Team J. The underlying content, including the script, story, and characters, remain the exclusive property of their owners and are used with permission. For all the latest episodes and information on Jabberwocky Audio Theater, visit jabberaudio.com. If you're enjoying Rogue Tiger and the other yarns we spin at Jabberwocky Audio Theater, be sure to subscribe and share, and please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash teamjabberwocky for exclusive content and to help us continue to bring you further tales of high adventure and mysterious suspense. Until next time, this is William R. Coughlin saying thanks for listening, and tune in next week for more Rogue Tiger. Hast thou slain the Jabberwock? You're listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network, where you can enjoy the wonders of the imagination. And speaking of wonders, everybody wonders why the Bells in the Bat Free podcast is still plugging along, not only on Friday Follies, but a bunch of times on Sunday Showcase as well. Give Bells in the Bat Free a listen sometime, and you'll wonder how he gets away with some of that stuff. Rated G, family-friendly. Caution, occasional toxic puns.